Hello, 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 and welcome to this week's final live stream. Uh, if you couldn't guess, we're going to be talking a lot about forestry today, uh, considering a blog just went out. So if you haven't had a chance to read that, go and uh, use the command forestry in the chat, uh, and you can read while we have a lovely little talk. Uh, I'm probably with the most appropriate person uh, to talk forestry, which is Mod Squid. How are you doing, good sir? Hello. Yeah, good. Uh, excited to talk forestry. It's been a bit of a wild week, but um, yeah, here we are ready to talk some details. Yes, yes. Very wild week. And in case uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with what's happened this week, we were meant to have a forestry beta on Monday. Um, I will get on to why that's not the case briefly um, in just a sec. And we released a new blog today with some uh, extended details just to give you the lowdown on the things you weren't too sure about. Uh, so before we begin, begin the stream today, uh, just wanted to let you know we will be holding a giveaway at the end uh, where two pride themed old school runescape t-shirts will be up for grabs. So make sure you stick around to the end uh, and join the giveaway for a chance to win one of the t-shirts. So uh, um, let's go through some announcements. So again, if you want to read the blog that's just come out, uh, exclamation mark forestry in the chat, uh, we announced the release date of part one, which will be Wednesday the 28th of June. So not too long to wait uh, to get your topping goodness uh, started. Uh, and as I said, we've made a bunch of uh, changes con uh, considering your feedback. Uh, and there's some extra information talking about how the systems works and, and everything else. So go and check that out. It's got a link to the previous uh, beta blog post as well. So uh, there's two new posts for you to uh, have a look at. Uh, and exclamation mark giveaway 2023. Uh, if you want to check out the T's and seeds for the giveaway at the end of the stream, please use that command uh, to do so. Exclamation mark game update. The Pride event 2023 is here. Uh, you can help some local hopeless romantics in a new quest line. Style yourself with Pride with new cosmetics and join the in-game march that happened yesterday. Uh, for those of you there, it was a very, very good event. Um, just a whole bunch of goodness. Uh, it was nice. There was a lot of uh, transmog J mods there, uh, showcasing the best of the best, uh, and just spreading the love as we should. Uh, and finally, if you want to check that out, you can use exclamation mark March. Uh, we've uploaded the VOD for that onto YouTube, so go and check it out. Uh, it was a fantastic event, and hopefully we can continue to uh, carry on those events in the future. Okay, so. Before we come to you, Squid, uh, go into some questions and some info about forestry, let's cover uh, the release schedule and what's going on. So, as I previously stated, there was a beta meant to go live on Monday. Unfortunately, uh, due to some unforeseen technical issues, and I want to stress their technical issues and not content issues, uh, we had to postpone the beta indefinitely, which uh, I can say, especially from a personal experience, was uh, really disappointing um, as we really wanted you guys to jump in and test it all out and we were all ready uh, to take on all your feedback and, and jump in game with you and just see see how you liked it. Um, so in terms of the timeline, uh, Forestry Part 1 is set to release on the 28th of June with Part 2 following in August. Um, there will be no beta for Part 1, um, but we will be discussing, like today, uh, and showcasing forestry in a, ve a variety of ways, including a Discord Stages event on Wednesday the 14th at 5pm. So uh, stick around, uh, tune in for that on the Wednesday. Uh, myself and Squid have never done a Discord Stages before, and I don't know if we've done one in the old school Discord before, but we shall see how it works. The um, new skill Discord has been doing them, and they've uh, been going down really, really well. So uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that uh how we handle that. Um, so in terms of what's being moved, new um, new leaves, teas, campfires, tertiary effects. Glad I got that right. I've been getting that word wrong all week. Uh, and the bonfires effect have been moved to part two, um, just so um, it gives us more time to discuss the details with you and go into a community consultation, which will happen. Um, it will happen fairly soon. I believe fairly soon. We're still in the processes of ironing out the details, but um, 
we will have a second round of community consultation with you all. Um, as for the stuff we have moved, your feedback, um, ultimately, we saw you felt the tertiary buffs were far too removed from the content and something that felt like a, a slippery slope towards efficiency scape. So we're going to revisit them and have already got a few ideas for the new effects, including increased chance not to burn food whilst cooking on the fire, increased chance of bird nests while woodcutting, fires to burn for longer, uh, fletch percent chance for more arrow shafts per log, uh, and an increased chance to receive clues from skilling only. Um, we also wanted to clarify around bonfires. Uh, this method would, of fire making would have been given, well, would have given approximately 25% experience per hour compared to lighting fires the classic way uh, and around 50% less than Winter Todd. Uh, so it would give you free routes to train fire making all their own levels of experience and intensity with this being the most AFK but least effective uh, for gaining experience. Uh, and we will return in the near future with some more information uh, to give you a better chance of reviewing our decisions for part two uh, as we roll into the second phase of community consultation. Um, and finally, to clarify, what you'll see in part one is the new tree mechanics, the group cutting bonuses, the forestry kit and all the items that feature inside of it, four new events and the reward shop and plenty of lovely rewards to go along with it. Oh, okay. That is my big ramble out of the way for those of you who didn't catch everything that's happened this week. It's been a mad, crazy week. I don't know if you want to touch on anything before we go into questions and stuff, Squid, but it's been a, a crazy week. Yeah, I mean, we were all super disappointed with the beta, but, you know, these things happen. It was a new, t new tech for us, so, uh, yeah, you know, these things sometimes happen. It's a shame, but... Uh... We've, I think we've got a good direction now, a good way to proceed with the, while still being able to get feedback on the things that we really need it on. So, uh, yeah. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Yeah. Again, we can't confirm whether there will be a beta for part two. That is the hope, but we can't, we're not in a position right now to um, confirm that this is going to be the case. We're very hopeful that that will be the case, but until we have concrete <laughs> confirmation, um, you're just gonna have to keep an eye out for any new updates from us, unfortunately. So, with that all out of the way, let's jump into some questions around the content. So first up, let's go with new tree mechanics, Squid. So do you want to give us a little explanation on how the new tree spawning system works? Yeah, so um, as we've talked about before, um, resources in RuneScape are highly competitive. Because every time you gather something from a resource, whether it's um, for woodcutting or mining, uh, there is a chance for the resource to deplete. Um, and so for woodcutting particularly, every time you gather, there's a chance for that tree to cut down, which means no one else can gather from it. So the more people chopping a tree, the faster that tree is going to disappear. So it's generally best to avoid other people and go off on your own with a tree on your own. Um, that's not the best kind of gameplay for an MMO where we want to facilitate interactions. Um, so what we're, what we're doing is changing how trees uh, despawn. So instead of it being a chance when you chop it, all trees will have a fixed lifetime now, which is based on their current sort of average lifetime with a bit of tweaking to make sure the XP rate still um, even out the same. Um, and that lifetime timer will start ticking down when someone chops the tree for the first time. If you stop chopping it, then it will slowly regenerate after a short delay. Um, but it's not affected by how many people are chopping it. So many people can chop the same tree and it will still last the same duration. Um, so you're not getting a, a downside to chopping with other people. Um, along with that, we are adding an invisible woodcutting buff to everyone chopping the same tree based on how many people are cutting it. So if you're on your own, there's no difference. You don't get any boost. And then from one player to up to a total of 10 players chopping the same tree, uh, you'll get a scaling buff up to plus 10 invisible woodcutting boost um, to you. So for reference, the woodcutting guild is a plus seven invisible boost, no strings attached, you just get that. Um, so we want to make it competitive with that if you've got people to 
join in with and find out in the world and kind of encourage people to move away from the woodcutting guild because that's just the de facto place to go and it just funnels everyone to the same place in the world compared to pre woodcutting guild where you'd have people sort of in Sears village and spread around um yeah we want to bring that feeling back again yeah you will have the uh efficiency of having multiple different trees in the woodcutting guild alongside that which makes it um more balanced as there will be multiple trees you can access uh you just won't get the uh highest invisible bonus because we want to encourage that uh group play in the world and just honestly we just want to see loads of people chopping together across the world it's just like such a nice feeling to see loads of people working together for one concrete goal um even if that is just to chill and chop essentially um so yeah um on that note then squid how did we get to the uh despawn times that we included in the most recent news post uh so they are based on um the average lifetime that the current trees um stick around for for people of the the correct level correct level being when you unlock it uh, of that unlock level for that tree on average how long that tree would last for uh, when you're chopping it on your own so we didn't want to make it um you know, super short or super long compared to what they are currently obviously that value changes a bit if you're a uh, higher level compared to the tree level it would chop down faster currently but it will last longer now um then there's some adjustment we've sort of dialed them down a little bit um to kind of even out that difference between the unlock level and higher levels um but that's that's what they're based on yeah we were actually uh running more numbers today uh weren't we squid just to double check and uh squid's got some handy little uh pieces of tech he's, he's made himself which is uh really useful like really useful um so yeah it's very nice seeing it all in action uh i'm not gonna lie um right so uh just on the new tree mechanics because i know we've answered some questions from uh the group boost i was going to get onto next but um one player asked about blisterwood trees and if they're affected with the new timers. Yeah, so blisterwood aren't yet. The idea is to convert all trees to use the, the new system. Um, we just don't have time to do all of them at the moment, so we're focusing on the ones that give multiple resources and deplete, like blisterwood doesn't deplete, so um, that wasn't a priority. Um, but it, so blisterwood is exactly the same. But most other trees that give multiple resources uh, have been converted. Um, I think all of them except redwood and hollow trees spawn forestry events. So they're the only two that have been converted that don't spawn forestry events. But yeah, that was the focus initially. There are some trees that obviously left over that we want to convert over. But yeah, that was the focus to start with. Awesome, awesome stuff. Yeah, so eventually I'm sure maybe there's some other trees that we've overlooked as well. Um, but th yeah, this is a good base for us to just um, make sure that it's the right system um, and working for everybody and easier to manage. So, you know, maybe maybe with part two, you'll see some additional trees added to that roster, um, including Blisterwood. Who knows? Um, all right, so we've already sort of touched upon how group boosts work, Squid. Um, does this work with redwood trees? Uh, no, because they are in the woodcutting guild. So the, the group boost doesn't apply in the woodcutting guild, and redwoods are only in the woodcutting guild. Farming trees aren't affected, by the way. Uh, just for clarity, they use the existing system. Um, so redwoods, no. They don't get a group boost. You'll just get the plus seven from being in the woodcutting guild. Awesome stuff, awesome stuff. Um, is there anything else you want to touch upon uh, in terms of new tree mechanics or group boost, Squid, before we move on to uh, some funky new items? Um, oh, some people saying red was in the farming guild. Yeah, they're grown ones, though. Um, farming trees are the same. Um, they're not changed. It's just the fixed ones, the static world ones, which have changed. Um, also, some was saying about, does this affect two ticking or three ticking teaks? Uh, no. They will still deplete if you two tick or three tick teaks. Like the amount of time might be slightly different, but they will still deplete. 
yeah. So as we said, if you if you stop chopping a tree or everybody stops chopping a tree, the uh, respawn will start to slowly creep back up, um, but slowly. So um, you know, if you decide you don't want to chop that tree, it's not going to fall down in X amount of seconds because you've started chopping it. It will slowly go up if no one touches it. Uh, that point after. Cool. All right. Let's move on then to the forestry kit mod squid um can you tell us uh what the forestry kit is how it's used and uh you know just the general premise around it around it sure um so the first thing i wanted to do with forestry with the events that are coming which we'll touch on shortly but with the events that are coming we want to make sure we still provide a way to woodcut without any events so exactly like you would in the current game you just go and you find a tree and you just cut the tree nothing else happens um, so if you don't have your forestry kit on you, then events won't spawn for you. Um, obviously, if there are other people chopping the tree with you that have their kit, that will spawn an event. But that is the uh, the opt-out if you want to just find a world on your own. And uh, or with a group of friends, you just want to do it without any events. That's how to do it. Um, the kit itself contains... Um, it can hold, sorry, all the items you need for forestry stuff. So there are various little event items that are required to spawn some of the events, which will stack in the kit. Um, some of the new bonuses, bonus items that provide buffs while woodcutting go in the kit. So the nature offering that has a chance to give you extra logs, um, that stacks in the kit um, and is also consumed from the kit. And yeah, I think that's, I mean, leaves, leaves go in it as well. Um, they're part of it, they'll go in the kit. So it's just a utility item for the new forestry stuff. Um, if you want to engage with that stuff, to store them in a nice, nice way that uh, allows you to stack a lot without having to sacrifice a load of inventory slots for them. Awesome, thank you, Squid. I will say just a comment that I've just seen: uh, axes don't go in the kit. You still to use an axe uh, as you're chopping a tree. You can't just headbutt it, or it magically. Uh, depletes doesn't work like that. You'll still need your axe yeah. out, either in your invent or or wielded. So, okay. Um, what pieces of the kit are tradable and stackable? Um, so what stuff goes in it is tradable and stackable. Um, so the kit itself isn't tradable, um, but you can just get one really easily from the creepy forest to go. Um, the everything inside the kit he says tentatively, is uh, tradable and stackable. Everything that goes in the kit is stackable. Everything that goes in the kit, aside from if... I think, is there anything untradable anymore? I think pretty much everything is tradable. Um, I think we've outlined them in the post as well, or at least we'll do, to give you the specifics. But pretty much everything is tradable. Uh, that's kind of the idea, stimulate that economy around it. Um, yeah, everything that goes in the kit, stack wheel, everything that goes in the kit, bar maybe the, or the clothes pouch maybe, isn't, um, yeah, everything that goes in the kit is pretty much tradable, all the consumables at least. Yeah, exactly. Um, and how do the new items work then, Squid? You say there's a bunch of new items in the kit, but do you have to take them back out? Like, what's the process of, like, using the items for either events or to get bonuses? Yeah, so for the event items, um, they put them in your kit, or you can have them in your inventory if you want, but the kit's the logical place to put them. Um, when an event uh, is going to spawn, it will just consume that from your kit automatically. Um, with the other consumable items, like the nature offerings and Sakatera attachment and things like that, they give you more resources. They are stackable and auto consumed as well. So you don't need to be micromanaging your kit basically. If it's in the kit, you can it will be consumed from the kit. Um, you don't need to go in and take it out and click it or, or whatever. It will just be consumed when the trigger happens. Um, yeah, I think that, that covers it. Yeah, yeah. So the kit is like your best friend basically during this update. It's your best friend aside from the new homies you're going to make uh, outside of uh, Draenor Village Bank. So, yeah. Keep him yeah. with you or, you know, keep them with you at all times. It will 
uh, chill. Logs do not go uh, into the kit, just to clarify, I've seen a couple of comments. They will still go into inventory, or if you get the handy new uh, log sack. Log sack? Is it log, or log pouch? Log, ba log basket? Log basket, there we go. Got there in the end. Um, you know, they will go in there and then your inventory. So they will not go in your forestry kit at all. They will still work as intended. Um, cool. And you spoke about leaves, squid. Do they... How do how are they collected? Uh, do they go into your inventory as well? Or, or what? Um, if you have a forestry kit on you, when you get leaves either from pruning diseased trees or from chopping trees now that we're adding them to drops from there, then uh, they'll just go straight into your kit if you have a kit on you. If you don't have a kit on you, they'll go into your inventory. So yeah, like we said, um, yeah. it's, your, it's, yeah, it's your best friend. It's your best friend. Just keep it on you at all times and you should get all the benefits as long as you've got the right pieces of kit in there and anything you collect aside from logs uh, should go in there, like the leaves and stuff. So awesome. All right. I think Those nests and stuff don't go in it either, just to clarify that. The only thing that drops yeah. some trees that goes in it is our leaves. <laughs> yes. So just, so just the new stuff we're spawning from dropping trees. So normal, yeah, everything else will work the same way. Um, hopefully we've made that clear. I hope so. If I haven't in the news post, I will make sure that's clear in the news post. Um, cool. All right. Shall we move on then and talk about some events, Squid? Should we see what's, what's going on with uh, the events in part one? Uh, what can players expect? Um, yeah, so what events are going in? So there are four events coming up with part one. Um, we have the Leprechaun event, which um, he will allow you to bank woodcutting items for you. Um, so actually, there's two parts to that. If if you have a Leprechaun, in, is it called a Leprechaun Insignia? I, Lep I think it's just a Leprechaun Charm. Three times. Yeah. Leprechaun Charm, is a Leprechaun Charm now? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you have one of those, which is a new forestry item um, that you craft with a component you purchase through forestry uh plus all of wool i think it is um you can create a charm and if you have that when the event spawns if you're chopping that tree and that event spawns on that tree the charm will be consumed and you will be the electrical will pop up and you can bank anything in the inventory uh if you don't have leprechaun charm he will just bank logs um i think might might be leaves as well. I'm not sure. Might just be logs, woodcutting resources, effectively. Um, so he lets you just, yeah, be a little bit more efficient when you're out there, not have to do a bank run. They pop up. Just a nice little uh, surprise there. Uh, the second event is uh, rising roots, where um, roots rise up out of the ground around the tree, and you can just chop them. Fairly simple. There's a chance for one of them to be a special infused root which will give you uh, more xp and more animal infused bark when you chop it um that's a fairly simple one that one doesn't require any uh, items to spawn um third event is a struggling sapling event where when the tree is chopped down it uh will appear as a little sapling that is struggling to grow um there'll be a timer bar on it and a little health bar and some res some uh like compost resources will spawn around it. I think there's uh, five five different resources that appear. And basically it's a little puzzle where you can create mulch from three of those, any combination of those uh, resources, up to three pieces, um, to create mulch and then apply that to the sapling. When the sapling spawns, it generates the optimum mulch combo. So you have to figure out uh, what that is and obviously if you're playing with other people then you can share as you find out which ingredients go in which order in which slots so there's a little puzzle there to figure out and then you just apply it uh, save the sapling and if you manage to save it in time then you'll get a big drop of uh, xp and um anna infused back as well as some leaves in that one um and then the final one is the flowering tree event where some bushes pop up around the tree and um they have to, at any one moment, uh, two of them are ready to pollinate and you have to spread the pollen between those two. But you don't know which they are at the time, so you have to go around the bushes and find the ones that are currently active. So obviously the more people there are, then the more you can um, 
the quicker you can find them, share those locations, see where people are running around, see which bushes people are running between, and then they periodically uh, change which ones are active. And then if you spread enough pollen between them, they'll fruit and you'll get some XP and an infused bark and uh, strange fruit from them, the little strange, strange fruit bushes, um, as well as a chance for some farming seeds from those. Uh, yeah, that, that's those events. Um, and they spawn, I might as well just go straight to that. Uh, they spawn based on um, a chance when you're chopping the tree. So when you start chopping the tree, uh, there will, event will be, the event table will be rolled on, the entire table. So it doesn't matter what items people have, the entire table will be rolled on and an event will be picked. That event will either spawn during chopping or when the tree is chopped down. If it's during chopping, a period within the tree's lifetime will be picked. And when that period is reached, the roll will happen. It's at the end and it's chopped down. The roll will happen when the tree is chopped down. Um, when the roll happens, it's uh, each tree has a chance which works out to about, I think we said in the news post, about, um, four or five if you're on your own, maybe about seven to nine if you're with at least nine other people, so 10 people total. Um, and if it spawns, then it will, if it needs a, an item, it will check if anyone has that item. Um, if no one does, then you miss out on the event, so it's always best to carry a full kit. Um, if someone does have the item, everyone with the item gets consumed and it will spawn. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> Information dump. <laughs> yeah, I feel like there's going to be a few of those uh, this stream and also in the news posts themselves. So yeah, read, read them carefully because there's been a lot of words uh, talking about forestry over the last week. Um, so in that instance then, what item, uh, what events, sorry, uh, need items. Uh, so it's just the leprechaun and flowering tree event that currently needs items. So for leprechaun, you need, as we said, the leprechaun charm, uh, and the flowering tree needs a be on a stick. So the event items require a component that is purchased through forestry. So a little bit of animal infused bark and some logs to purchase them, and then you combine that with some other items. Um, and that gives you the a, a number of the final item you need. So one component gives you several um, event items. They're all tradable. The components tradable. The event item is tradable. So um, yeah, the whole the whole way through is tradable, and they are consumed when the event spawns. Or if you come in late to the event and engage with it, it will consume it for you. Awesome. Okay, so there's no way to make less just say for example the leprechaun event always spawn uh, and be the only one that spawns yeah yeah so yeah exactly because it rolls on the entire event table um all the events have an equal chance of spawning and if you don't have the requirement for it it just won't spawn and you'll miss out on that event it's so you can't influence it um the reason for that is we want it to be social we want people to be able to just join in if they see people woodcutting if you can manipulate it with what items you're carrying. People will want to naturally have certain events spawn in their session. If someone rocks up with a forestry kit full of other stuff, they're not going to be best pleased. It goes against the spirit of uh, inclusivity. Awesome, awesome stuff. All right, uh, Squid, I think that covers everything in events. Uh, there was a lot of information there, uh, people, so... <laughs> I imagine if you want to go back, there is some information in the beta blog we released on Monday uh, that gives you a brief explanation of the events and the spawning mechanics are in the news post that came out today. Uh, because there's so much information, it's hard. We are going to create a combined news post at some point that gives you all the details in one coherent news post. Um, can't tell you when that's going to be, uh, especially because of how busy this week has been, but hopefully soon, hopefully soon. Um, right. Let's go on to something a bit uh, juicy and talk about rewards. Now, I'm going to preface, we've already seen a lot of comments about the two-handed axe, and that has its own little section of questions, which we will get to. Uh, so don't worry, we will be talking about it. Um, first off then, Squid, what are the rewards we're going to see in the forestry shop with part one? Um... Let me just grab the list so I don't forget any. One second. Uh, right, so 
the rewards. You'll have the shop, which we've uh, yeah touched on, which requires Anna infused bark, which you get from doing forestry events. Um, there are sort of a few different sections to them. The first one, first section of rewards are these repeat utility components that you need to make the event items or the other consumables. So we've got the Sakata's blade, um, which you can use to craft the Sakata's attachment, which goes in your forestry kit and is consumed when you chop a tree to give you more leaves. Um, you get a big, you get like 50 of those at the moment per Sakata's blade that you buy. So you get a good run for your, for your money. Um, second one are the nature offerings component, which is used to craft a nature offering. You just combine that, combine that with an herb. Um, quite a few herbs can be used, so you can choose which one you've uh, got stock of and you want to use. Um, and that'll give you a nature offering, which gives you 40 of those, and they're consumed when you chop a tree. They're a little bit like spirit flakes. They're consumed when you chop the tree. You have a chance to gain extra logs. That chance is scaled uh, based on the number of pe people chopping that tree. Um, so I think it's up to like 80% if you're uh, 10 players on it. Um, then, then we've got the event items, which in phase one, we have the Forester's Insignia, which you use to make the Leprechaun charm. And we have uh, Powdered Pollen, which you use to make the Be On A Stick. Um, for that one, I think you need a log. You need a powdered, powdered pollen, a log, and uh, I think you go to... Do you need some wool as well? You might need some wool. And then you go to the beehives in uh, Issa's village and coax out a little bee. Stick, <laughs> stick it on the string. He's chill. You get 10 of those each at the moment for those. Um, and then for actual one-off rewards, which is kind of the big thing that you want to be saving up your random fees back for non-repeat purchases we've got the 200 axe parts which we'll come to um we've got a transmog for the lumberjack outfit which is just an alternate version of the lumberjack outfit it has all the same bonuses but just looks a bit different um we've got the actual lumberjack outfit so a way to get it that isn't through um temple trucking um and we've got the log basket which allows you works like the fish barrel you can store up to 28 logs in it um, they can't be removed unless you're at a bank got a log brace which allows you to attach the log basket to your forestry kit so the log basket and the forestry kit can be worn on your back but they're two individual items with the log brace you can combine them together to make the forestry basket which is both of them in one slot on your back which looks also, also looks really cool uh, there's the clothes pouch blueprint, which allows you to make the clothes pouch, which you can store your lumberjack outfit in and put in the forestry kit. As long as you're not wearing other outfits with bonuses, then it will give you your lumberjack bonus without needing to wear the outfit explicitly. So you can wear fashionscape and still get your lumberjack bonus. And then finally, there's the funky shaped log, which is unlocks uh, transmogs for your beaver pet. Um, so you feed the beaver the funky shaped log, and then you can feed it any other type of log, almost any other type of log. Uh, and it will change the color of the beaver to match that tree. I think that's everything. Awesome, awesome stuff. I'm I'm not gonna lie. On a personal note, I'm really glad that is the name we stuck with because that was an offhand name from me <laughs> uh, in the early stages of this, and I think it just stuck. So it's gonna be nice seeing the funky shaped log go into yeah. game. Uh, uh, cool. All right. So in terms of spending. Um, how do you um, put the resources into uh, the forestry shop? Because uh, I know that there is need for noted logs, but does that mean we can use normal logs uh, in our inventory? Um, so the amount of logs you need for most things, um, it's quite a lot of logs. We want to make, um, take, a, take a decent chunk of logs out of the, out of the economy. Um, so we, you know, we're looking at, um, so 50 to 100 of each type of log for some of these things. Um, some of these one-offs. A little less for the repeat purchases, obviously. Um, so to facilitate that, make that easier to carry around, you can set them and the shop will take certed logs. Um, it becomes a bit of a technical challenge based on how the centralized shops work um, to make it also accept non-noted logs alongside that. So they are just certed. They can only be certed logs. Um, 
yeah, so you just want to assert them first. UAMs can, uh, there's a new challenge for you. Source those certain lots. There yeah, so for those, those UIMs that haven't read the latest blog, we were originally going to poll um, if the Freaky Forester should note logs. Um, but after seeing some feedback and we, you know, had some discussions internally, we felt it just didn't fit the game mode right. There is also a lot of ways to get noted logs. Uh, well, not a lot of ways. There are ways to get noted logs as a UIM, which adds to the challenge of the game mode. And to respect that, that's why we've decided to not include it at all uh, as an option. The only set of logs you can't get noted currently are Arctic Pine logs. And we're going to have some discussions about maybe adding them to a drop table of some kind. Uh, that's not confirmed yet. We're just in, you know, it's a very, um, it was a very late discussion, but it was something that we're definitely going to consider. So at least if you want to, as an ultimate Iron Man, get all the rewards you can, you're just going to have to work for it. Um, because you chose that game mode. So, um, to respect that, we're not going to include that. Oh, I think that's it for the rewards. You did a pretty uh, sound job summarizing all of those, Squid. So, uh, thank, thank you. you. Um, I suppose then we should go on to the most controversial reward, which we explained in detail uh, in the most recent blog. So if you want to read that while we're talking about it, go ahead and use exclamation mark forestry. Yep, forestry in the chat. Uh, you can pull up that blog and read it. It is near the bottom of the news post. Um, so yeah, first up for anyone who hasn't uh, taken a look at the new news post, uh, Squid, How'd you get the two-handed axe? So you will purchase a two-handed axe, I don't know, shaft or something from the forestry shop, and you will combine that with a one-handed axe of your choice. So if you want a two-handed dragon axe, you'll use this new two-handed axe part with a one-handed dragon axe, and it will create a two-handed version of it. Um, they're also tradable, so you could buy one if you want. Awesome. All right. And how do they work? Which is probably the more, I'd say, the most amount of feedback we've got back so far, just from an early, early viewing. But how do you want to explain how they work? Yeah. Um, so when we originally raised the idea in the, po the original poll of uh, 200 axes, it was polled as more XP, less logs. Um, so that's what we're going with. More XP, less logs. Um, the idea for them is that they will have when you're using them it will consume your run energy as a resource um, every time you hit the tree and if you've got the energy to spend on it um, it will take 40 percent energy and if you've got the energy you'll get a buffed hit so it will have 20 percent um less chance uh 20 chance sorry to not get a log but you'll get an xp drop of about 18 percent higher than normal um, to help with that there is a new item that um, oh yeah we didn't mention in the rewards but it's not from the forestry shop it's just something you can craft which is a forester's ration which you just use uh, a cooked meat and a set of leaves with any type of leaves works um, and that creates a three forester's rations um, they go in your forestry kit and they stack um, and when you chop a tree with those in your kit you get 30% energy back. Um, so in the combination with the two, you get about, it works out to about every 50% um, of your hits on a tree will be buffed, which works out to about 10% extra XP per hour um, over a session, roughly. Um, so yeah, and if you don't have the energy to consume, it would just be, probably just be a normal, work like a normal axe at that point. Um, so it's just when it consumes the energy, you get the buffed strike. Um, will it work with all axes? Yes, infernal axe is a good question, actually. <laughs> but um, dragon crystal, third age, yeah. 
Yeah, we've already got the uh, models. If you take a look in the blog, there's a there's a nice picture of some of the higher tier two-handed axe models from Rune to even Third Age is getting uh, its own two-handed axe version. Um, so yeah, they are. Um, oh, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, it's a new system. Um, so I can understand there's probably some. I think it's quite an interesting system. I don't know why my mic commuted there. How uh, how quick how how quick did I get cut off? Okay, I'll just carry on. I'll just carry on. Uh, okay, the uh, so yeah, it's a new system. Uh, we're trying something a bit different. Personally, I think it's quite an interesting system. Your offset of rations initially. You'll get about, I think it's six or seven chops in. If you've got enough rations, you'll get about six or seven chops in. All uh, using the, the, that, that will trigger the buffs. And then at that point, you'll have no run energy. So you will have about two chops to take yourself back up to then get into a constant cycle of, I think it's two chops in, two chops out. So as long as you've got those rations there, and I will state they are stackable and tradable. They go in the forest forestry kit or the forester's kit and they will consume automatically. So you will not have to be clicking. Uh, you won't have to be clicking anything else. You just have to chop the tree like normal. Um, and yeah, that's I'd say that's pretty much it. I know there's some we've got some other questions here. Uh, I will state that there was a couple of comments I saw after the news post went out that spoke about um, maybe offsetting and having a chance to get more logs for less experience if you go back to the poll question the poll question specifically stated that the two-handed axes will give you more experience and less logs um so that's why we've done it this way because that's how it was polled um cool was there a reason squid to use the run energy to drain i think is an interesting mechanic um but why um yeah, I mean, it was so. I've seen some people say, "Why, why don't we just make it so it gives you less logs and more XP? Why do the run energy thing at all?" Um, logs, for a normal account, logs are next to worthless, right? They they don't cost much at all. Um, you get loads of them. They're just trading logs for XP isn't a, an equal deal. XP is worth more. Um, so just reducing that also, if you're going for pure XP, people drop their logs anyway. So by reducing the amount of logs you get and boosting XP, you're just helping that. Um, so it's not a trade-off at all in that case. It's just a buff. So what we thought was, well, there are 200 axes. We have a resource, which is energy. It could be an interesting system to make use of energy um, as a resource in this case. Um, that allows you to get that buff instead. Um, and that means because it's a chunky amount of energy that it's taking, um, you can use them with energy restoring items like the new Forester's Ration being the most convenient way um, to spend your energy as a resource and those items as a resource to get that boosted XP um, for your entire session effectively and get that buff. Um, if you don't want to spend use Forester's Rations, you're still going to get a slight boost because as soon as your energy gets to that threshold it's going to consume it and get the booster xp but outside of that it will just be a, a normal axe so you still get a slight boost anyway um yeah i mean that that kind of sums up the reasoning um we thought yeah we thought it'd be an interesting thing right um and an interesting way to balance that um power yeah so just to clarify if you don't have any run energy left and you have no forester's rations the effect won't um, happen. You'll just have to wait for your run energy to go back up or restore it with some other method, i.e. Um, energy potions or something like that. But again, Forester's rations, considering how easy they are to make, because you only need one cooked meat and one uh, pile of leaves, and that's any pile of leaves. This is not just like normal leaves. It's any of them, and you will be getting them from the trees. We feel like that's a whole little mini economy in itself, and it's sort of like... I think it is uh, again. I think personally, it's a cool, it's a cool idea, and 
it makes it more interesting to use the two-handed axe. Um, I did see someone say, will the rations be usable anywhere? No, they will only be used when chopping trees. That is the only time you'll be able to use them. Uh, they work by, uh, I think, when you when a successful hit happens, Squid, if I'm right, and you have less than full run energy, it will then automatically put you up by the 30 points that you're lacking or whatever. So, um, yeah, and the this is a good question, Squid. I thought I'd pull this out because maybe it's like a nice alternative. Um, I don't know how technical, technically challenging it will be, but is there, could we put an option in to turn that off? Potentially. Um, I guess that just makes it a transmog effectively for normal axes. We don't want to make one-handed axes like pointless or that effect, really. Um, so maybe, um, possibly, yeah, maybe. I guess there's the there's the, the pro and con of if you don't want it, just use a one-handed axe. Um, but then yeah, you could say, well, it looks cool. I want to use it for looking cool. I'll toggle it off. I'm not sure. I think there's a conversation to be had there. Yeah, it's definitely something we'll raise and talk about as a team. Um, but I thought it was worth uh, worth raising. Um, so last big question I've got on the uh, two-handed axes before we move on to some chat questions, because I want to get onto a couple of them because there's some decent ones in there. Um, what was the decision behind uh, them being irreversible? Um, so to state, once you change a axe to a two-handed axe, you cannot convert them back. Um, and tradable um so yeah so first one irreversible um it makes the uh the component a little bit more valuable if uh, you need it to if you want multiple axes or you want um yeah different types of axes then you need to get a component for each one you can't just keep swapping it around um it also means you can't just swap, buy it once, swap in and out of your 100 axe, 200 axe. That's just this case. Uh, swap in and out of your 200 axe and 100 axe. Um, sort of at a tree, um, which is kind of a weird little interaction. To just keep swapping back and forth between a 100 axe and 200 axe. Um, so, yeah, we went with just you make the 200 axe, that's the 200 version now. Um, and then if you want a wonder dax again you can buy another wonder dax that makes it a little makes them a little bit more valuable um why tradable just tie into the economy side of forestry more we want to make similar economy um and yeah if you allow people to to trade them then you can either even if you don't want to do forestry you can get a 200 dax um but and it allows people who are doing forestry to sell those parts and make those 200 axes and sell them if they want to. Make direct tax chuck cut trees. <laughs> Get down to 1 HP and just one shot the tree. I think at that point you should just obliterate the tree though. It should just be removed. Yeah. You don't get any experience. You don't get any uh, uh, any logs. You're just taking out trees for the sake of it. It's gone from the game. It's just deleted. Yeah, Never regrows. Yeah. Uh, apologies for dipping, by the way. My cat is uh, crying, and now he's climbing, trying to climb out the closed window, because his small head, tiny brain, big booty. Um, right, so, um, last question I've got then, in terms of just general questions before we move into some chat ones. What parts of this are going to be free to play? Because the tree chop mechanics, especially, will affect everybody. But are there any other parts that will? So the forestry kit, forestry kit itself, will be free to play. The items that go in it, so yeah, all the items that go in it will be members. But that means you get access on free to play to the events that don't require those event items. So for phase one, that's rising roots and uh, the struggling sapling event as two events so yeah you'll get the new tree chopping mechanics you'll get the forestry kit and the free events but the the items that go in it will be members cool okay hopefully those free-to-play players out there uh caught all that 
Um, yes, I will show my cat. Don't worry, chat. You'll get you'll get a <laughs> glimpse of Joji. He's he's circling my legs as we speak. Uh, right. Let's move on to some chat questions then before we get into a little giveaway, uh, and then I'll show you my cat. So, how's that sound for the last ten minutes of stream? Pretty good, right? Pretty good. Um, right. So let's go with what do we want to do? What do we want to do? Uh, let's go from near the bottom, maybe. Uh, any plans or possibility of making dragon axes obtainable through woodcutting? Having them only from Winter Todd uh, and DKs is kind of weird and lacks flavor. Um, there aren't at the moment. It's a conversation that can be had. Um, maybe. If that's something that people want. And is yeah is good for the, uh, the dragon axe economy. It's a conversation we can have. Awesome, awesome stuff. All right, just for production's sake, because I'm going to be jumping around to questions. Uh, I'm going to try and mark all the ones I want to ask in green. You're going to see my cat. Maybe is on the desk. Um, yeah. So the next question I want to say is: Will it now be impossible to chop down a tree by yourself in a single chop? Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, it will be impossible to do that because it has a fixed lifetime. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Squid. Thank you, Squid. Um, all right, let's go for... Here we go. Uh, number 10 production, just to, to give you a heads up. Uh, are the tree roots still going to be given? Uh, not mentioned in the blog if that's in part two or part one. Um, yes, yeah, so we're not doing anything with tree roots for part one. So the original intention was because roots would be used in tea, we would make rising roots give roots. Um, since we're not adding that extra use for tea, we're not going to add the extra uh, extra gain from rising roots at the moment. If they come in part two with the after tea conversations, if they come in as beneficial for tea, then we can look at adding them from the roots event then. Awesome stuff. All right, the next question, question eight, and then I'll just go down the list production so you're not having to jump around. Uh, thank you, Spear, for putting up with me. Um, are maple logs going to have a use? They are cheap and useless right now, according to this player. Um, I mean, they are used as currency for some things in the forestry shop. That's the, uh, the main use they'll have. Awesome, awesome stuff. All right, something maybe we should have touched upon in our original questions, but are Iron Men able to participate in forestry? Uh, and if so, is there any exclusions uh, to Iron Men? Um, no, Iron Men can just, yeah, Iron Men can participate. Um, there's nothing, yeah, there's no exclusions for Iron Men. We can join in on events. Awesome, awesome. All right. Uh, I believe. Did we say about the group bonus? No, that was just it was, uh, oh, ca the... it was the campfires. It was the campfire stuff, but we're not putting that in part one. So, yeah, I yeah. will say, yeah, I will say we already pulled this bit. So when if campfires make it, Iron Man will not be able to gain any benefits from the campfires of other players, but they will be able to benefit from their own campfires. And other people will be able to benefit from normal players will be able to benefit from iron players campfires but that is going to be something we'll come back to when we discuss uh part two uh that was polled um so i'm sorry iron men if you feel different uh community has spoken so uh i'm pretty sure that was a iron only question as well so you've done this to yourselves if that's the case so uh sorry uh <laughs> Um, all right, question 13. Um, will forestry be, I'm guessing this is meant to be useful at high uh, skill levels? Um, if you want stuff from the forestry shop and if you want the XP, I mean, it might be potentially work out a little bit higher XP if you're engaging with the forestry events. Um, so, yeah. 
awesome stuff. All right, before we go into the next question, how about we do a little giveaway that we teased at the start? So if you want to win yourself an exclusive, and I will say exclusive because I believe these are not being sold, uh, Pride t-shirt, uh, then you need to type the keyword chop into the chat. You've got five minutes. You only need to type chop once to be entered. So 10 or 20 chops are not going to cut it. This isn't wood cutting. You only need one chop for this. Uh, and we'll be announcing uh, five, not five winners. That's a lot of winners. Two winners uh, in the next five minutes. So just when the stream ends, uh, we will announce that. So while um, the chat is going chop crazy, uh, let's answer some more chat questions. Um, can I give my woodcutting pet an axe so they can woodcut as well? Squid. <laughs> Double XP. Easy peasy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, how would it work? Do your does your does your pet get XP as well? Like their own little little levels? Oh there you go. A whole nother RuneScape within RuneScape of your pets. Maybe that yeah, maybe that's what aiming is. Maybe that's what aiming is. So level up your pets. Yeah, yeah level up your pets, tree. but Yeah, exactly. You get a little little tiny tree to chop with a little tiny axe, like this guy. This guy would have a little tiny axe in his mouth, just chopping the chopping the trees away. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cute. Okay. Uh, all right. Next question. Uh, can we use the kit on the matscape? Um, not at the moment. Um, yeah, but I don't know. How do people feel about that? Do you want to be able to combine your matscape with the kit? There's like a. I mean, if we something yeah, to if discuss. We can get out. If we get past the chops and chat. No, no, do it, <laughs> nah. No, yes combine, yes combine. More on the nose at the moment. So unless chat wants to turn it around, it does seem like nose. Uh, we can still put it out there, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll discuss it. It won't be in part one, it will be part two. And yes, it will be polled. It won't be a case of uh, not being polled. Um, all right, cool. Uh, I can take this one. Uh, will there be a video explaining forestry like Bounty Hunter? Uh, yes, there will, and sh I don't know, Squid, should we, uh, should we share who's, who's doing the video for us? Yeah, go for it. Hell yeah. I, I want to see if chat can guess who's doing the video, because there's one, one community member that stands Who do out. Who you think? Clearly above the rest, in terms of, uh, let's just, let's just call her the queen of woodcutting, because, because she is. So we'll leave it at that. We won't actually reveal the name, but I feel like you could get it from that. So yes, there will be a video. So um, yeah, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Look out for that. Uh, all right, cool. Uh, with that one done, uh, Squid, how long will it roughly take to get the full Lumberjack outfit, for example? Uh, let me pull up the numbers. From Forestry, roughly... Um, the full outfit. Um, uh, uh, the current numbers. About five hours of forestry. There you go. There you go. So that's a little insight into the uh, lumberjack outfit. And for those of you who want to get it, so you know, you just have to get chopping when uh when the content releases. All right, we are going to go for two more questions and then we'll do the giveaway winners. So um, behind the scenes team, if you want to close the giveaway and get the winners ready, um, that would be amazing. Uh, so second to last question, will there be a forestry pet? Uh, there isn't at the moment. There was talk of one of the events that we were looking at for phase two was the uh, pheasant event. There was talk of having a little pheasant pet, but um, yeah, nothing, nothing at the moment, nothing planned. Oh, all right, and uh, probably something that you don't know yourself, Squid, but I might as well ask it because it's in there. Um, will you guys be standardizing tree art across the game? I remember one mod slash artist saying they wanted to make all trees look like the ones in Karend, uh, Shazian, and Prith. I don't know. 
<laughs> Maybe. I'm, I don't know what the plans are there, man. Yeah, I, I maybe I don't think I. I feel like they're quite iconic. Um, they're quite iconic, so I would say no. Um, I feel like it's in the same vein of if we like remove classic fire making routes with the you know twenty seven fires in a row. It's just like so iconically old school. I might be wrong. But um, I feel like they're too iconic. Classic yeah, trees. I agree with you, you there, man. I agree. Maybe, maybe uh, the maybe because of the climate of uh, Karen and Kebos, that's why they're different. You know, maybe I don't know. I'm just throwing I'm just throwing things at the wall at the moment. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, right. Okay. So we have the uh, winners. Of the giveaway and then we'll go through some announcements and then we will wrap up so uh the first wi winner we have is a uh, crypt dommy and the second winner we have is a uh, menjo 21 so congratulations to uh both of you in chat um we will be in touch i believe keep your whispers open please uh one of us will be in touch to make sure we um get your details and send you the t-shirt so congratulations well done um all right so with that being said squid is there anything else you want to say before i rattle off the announcements again um, um i'll just say thank you everyone for your feedback and uh appreciate you working with us i know the not having a beta was a bit of a shame for everyone but uh thank you everyone for sticking with us giving the feedback and uh yeah if we'll make forestry awesome for everyone awesome yeah we uh, yeah we appreciate everyone tuning in we know a lot of people are gonna just read the blog and stick with that um so to everyone who's turned up thank you and yeah this is again this has been uh, a process that we want to work with you all in especially when it comes to part two and hopefully you've seen that we're doing right by you guys um which is ultimately what we want we want to do right by you with this content so um yeah hopefully hopefully that's shown um and hopefully when june 28th comes you'll be jumping in game and telling us how much you love it uh i'm sure myself and squid will be around i'm definitely going to be in game um on launch so uh i'll be around to answer any questions and help out uh, as many people as possible so yeah with that being said let's go through the announcements again uh, so if you missed the new blog um, exclamation mark forestry will take you to that as I said Wednesday 28th of June that's when part one is going live uh, we've made some changes from your feedback and we've moved some stuff to part two which will be um, continuing into a second phase of community consultation so look forward to that um, we have the giveaway. I've, I believe we will be doing the giveaways uh, in the upcoming streams this month, uh, since it is the month of Pride. So exclamation mark giveaway 2023 will take you to the T's and C's, uh, so you can see what's in store for you there. Um, exclamation mark game update. The Pride event 2023 is here. You can help some local hopeless romantics in the new quest line. Style yourself with Pride with new cosmetics and join the in-game, well, can't join the in-game march, but Feel free to do your own in-game marches because uh, we love to see it. Uh, and if, in case you missed uh, yesterday's in-game march, you can use exclamation mark march um, to see mod rock, mod other, and uh, some other J mods in game uh, joining in on uh, celebrating Pride in game, uh, and yeah, just spread in the love a little bit. So exclamation mark uh, march for that one. Ah. Um, oh, Oh wow, Spear! Look, <laughs> look at the look at the boy. He's very happy chilling there. Okay, excellent. Look, you're on camera, mate. You're on camera. Yeah, you got your own little little booth. How's that? Yeah, I know. All right, don't worry. I'll do the talking. It's fine. Um, yeah, just a little TLDR before we wrap up. Uh, uh, Forestry Part One set to release 28th of June. 
part two to follow in August with uh, community consultation. There will be no beta for part one. We'll be doing a Discord Stages event on Wednesday the 14th at 5 p.m. The official old school Discord, so mark it in your calendars. Uh, new leaves, teas, campfires, tertiary effects, and bonfires have been all moved to part two. Uh, and we'll continue to poll them going into community consultation. Uh, so you can expect new tree mechanics, group boosts, the forestry kit, the items that are included, events, the new rewards, and two-handed axes along with it. So um, yeah, hopefully that's everything. And hopefully we've given you some more clarity um, towards this update. I'm personally really excited for this update. Uh, I have been since I found out about the project. I'm sure Squid is. That's my past, bro. You can't take that. Okay. Um, yeah. Any final words, Squid, before we uh, before we head off? Yeah. No. Nice one, dude. Thank you, everyone, again. Um, and yeah, look forward to the launch. Seeing you all on launch. Awesome. All right. And again, stay tuned for some more uh, more news posts, some videos, the Discord stages. Uh, we will be talking about forestry over the coming months. So until then. Uh, stay safe, have a lovely weekend, and we will see you next week. Goodbye. <laughs>